Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Known as a symbol of opulence and exuberance, super yachts shine in every port they dock and showcase the glamorous lifestyles of their owners. Their big deck space is designed to make the most of outdoor living, while the interior living areas provide the perfect set to relax and socialize. Several manufacturing companies produce these incredible boats. usually launching them during events to show off their qualities and ostentatious features. However, although it offers luxurious amenities, the ship has limitations related to its autonomy during its voyages. Yachts are generally less fuel efficient than other ships, requiring more frequent stops to refuel. Considering these limitations, in some cases, other means must be used to transport yachts, especially when the ships must travel long distances without the option of finding a refueling place for example, by crossing the ocean or a large sea. Yacht transport vessels are the most appropriate and efficient solution to achieve this objective, being able to safely transport several vessels at the same time. The most common and oldest design of a transport vessel is based on a crane-operated ship. Using heavy-duty cranes to lift yachts from the water or dock and place them onto the deck. Those ships, also known as lift-on, lift-off vessels, are used when the yachts are too heavy or large to use other loading methods. Similar in design to a freighter, yacht transporters have ample deck space capable of accommodating up to dozens of vessels, reaching areas of up to 70,000 square feet. When yachts are to be loaded onto transport ships, port members and crew conduct a survey of the types of ships to be loaded, classified by weight and size. This determines the position of the yachts on the deck, thinking about distributing the weight evenly so that the cargo ship doesn't become unbalanced and there is no risk of sinking. Other designs for carrying large, heavy loads include heavy-lift, semi-submersible vessels using the float-on, float-off method. Although it looks somewhat similar to a dry bulk carrier or some tanker models on the outside, its differences are noticeable as its loading method is analyzed. At least two-thirds of its length comprises cargo space, with a series of ballast tanks that are flooded to lower the well deck below the water surface. 
Such tanks are filled using powerful water pumps that fill them with seawater. This system allows the crew to control the submersion depth and position the deck at the required level for the cargo to float on or off. Controlling each pump individually allows the tanks to be filled unevenly, helping to balance the load. This technology has clearly been implemented for the use of yacht transportation due to its efficiency and speed, which can be obtained during the loading of these vessels. Float on, float off vessels have simplified the logistics of transporting yachts by reducing the steps needed to place the cargo over the carrier. Such a process starts with coordinating between the yacht owner and the cargo team, detailing the stow plans in advance. This plan includes the position of the yacht on the carrier's deck and the preparation of the fixtures and fittings. Once the yacht is near the carrier, the ballast tanks are gradually flooded and the boats maneuver into positions over their designated cradles. Here, the yachts are moored, and the carrier starts to de-ballast, raising the deck and lifting the boats into their final positions. The capabilities offered by semi-submersibles have allowed them to be used for various situations including emergency cases, such as what happened with the USS John S. McCain warship. The Arleigh Burke-class destroyer was involved in a collision with the tanker ship Alnick MC on the 21st of August in 2017. This happened off the coast of Singapore and Malaysia, east of the Strait of Malacca. As a result of the collision, the destroyer sustained over $100 million in damage along its hull, causing extensive flooding below the waterline and crumpling berthing and some mechanical areas. The damage and fatalities prompted an international search and rescue process, as well as the recovery of the destroyer for repair. To do this, the MV Treasure heavy lift transport vessel was designed to carry the large military ship from Singapore to Yokosuka, Japan, where it would undergo initial repairs before further transportation back to the U.S. for complete restoration. This vessel was used as the destroyer's transport due to its specifications and capabilities starting with its deck length of 541 feet and 140 feet wide. The MV Treasure can carry loads weighing up to tens of thousands of tons, depending on the cargo and specific conditions. Like most semi-submersible vessels, the Treasure has a ballast system that controls the deck submersion, which is effectively used for the damaged destroyer. During the loading process, engineers and naval architects conducted detailed assessments to ensure the destroyer's safety. Such assessment also included the preparation of the destroyer, 
by removing the ship's propeller blades so as not to damage the carrier. Heavy-duty chains were used to prevent any movement of the destroyer once the carrier deballasted and to fix the ship during the ocean voyage. During journeys like these, the semi-submersible crew must work constantly so that the integrity of the cargo remains intact. The USS John S. McCain on top of the MV Treasure arrived in Yokosuka at the Ship Repair Facility Japan Regional Maintenance Center. When approaching the dock, tugboats play a significant role in assisting the docking and providing additional control. This was needed to position the semi-submersible into a clear and stable area of the port. Once positioned, the ship begins lowering its deck so that crew members and the port can release the chains and fixing points. Already floating, the ship was pushed with tugboats near the dock where it was moored and prepared for the reparation work. The complexity and precision behind transport vessels mean that equally meticulous preparation must be made to ensure the safety of cargo and crew. Regardless of the type of cargo or the type of vessel that will be used to transport said cargo, port workers and crew members follow a similar procedure. It generally starts with assessing the ship's structural condition, including all of its major components such as the hull, keel, and any superstructure. During these evaluations, engineers and technicians check for damages or weakened areas that require repairs or replacements. For lift-on and lift-off vessels, the evaluation of the crane system is crucial, which is the key element for these vessels. In the case of semi-submersibles, the ballast system is inspected and adjusted to achieve the correct draft for loading. This implies performance testing on the water pumps and structural assessment of the ballast tanks. With these reviews, the crew and team in port focus on planning the logistics of the upcoming jobs, covering a detailed schedule for loading and unloading the vessel and the type of cargo to be moved. Based on this, the vessel's crew works to design and position cradles, supports, and other securing mechanisms on the deck. With the cargo ready in port, it's loaded onto the ship through the specific system of that boat. The mooring lines are released, allowing the vessel to move out of the dock using tugboats if the conditions of the dock warrant it. Once in open water, the crew follows the transportation route predefined by the weather conditions, arriving at its destination following a strict procedure when unloading the cargo. The technological advances implemented for maritime cargo transportation have allowed us to have different options for treating cargo depending on its dimensions, weight, and shape. These developments have enabled a greater response to emergency events and adaptation to variable conditions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. 
See you next time.